Hello everybody, welcome back. So, there are two potential sources of hydronium ions in our beaker for talking about acids in an aqueous solution. So once again, always ask yourself, what's in my beaker? Well, definitely the ionization of the acid. Remember, anytime you think of acid, think of the bronsted lowry definition. They're proton donors. And protons are essentially hydronium ions when they are hanging around water. But we also learned in the previous video that water itself undergoes auto-ionization to produce hydroxide ions and hydronium ions in solution. So both of these processes are happening in your beaker at the same time. So let's write down those equations. So the acid in the presence of water ionizes. I'm gonna focus on weak acid, so using the double-headed arrow, the conjugate base, A minus, plus the conjugate acid of, wa conjugate acid of water, the hydronium ion. And then at the same time, water is also undergoing auto-ionization. which creates the hydroxide ions in solution and the hydronium ions in solution. So if you're asked to calculate the pH of the solution, you have to think about, well, what, where are the hydronium ions coming from? Well, they're coming from both the acid, if we're talking about a weak acid solution, and the auto-ionization of water. But don't have to really worry too much about the auto-ionization of water except in extremely dilute acidic solutions. The auto-ionization of water actually contributes to a negligibly small amount of hydronium ions. In a strong acid or weak acid solution, this additional hydronium ions from the acid causes the auto-ionization of water to shift left. based on Le Chatelier's principle that we've learned in an earlier video. So for example, when the acid starts to undergo ionization, it's producing hydronium ions in solution. That's the definition. It's a proton donor. Okay? So when that happens, you're increasing the concentration of the hydronium ion in your solution in this auto-ionization of water, which shifts the equilibrium to the left. Therefore, even, therefore, even minimizing you know, the contribution of the hydronium ions for the auto-ionization of water even more. So when you're asked to find the pH of a strong acid or weak acid solution, you can focus on the ionization of the acid only. Great. So, to review, strong acids undergo complete ionization. 
Therefore, you do not need a rice table. Rice table is used for the weak acids when you're in equilibria. And you can assume that the concentration of the strong acid is equal to the concentration of the hydronium ion. If we're looking at those monoprotic, monoprotic strong acids. I'll get to sulfuric acid in a later video, which is a polyprotic acid. So for example, let's say you have a 0.1 molar hydrochloric acid solution and you're asked to calculate the pH. Well, since it's 0.1 molar HCl, it will dissociate completely, and therefore your hydronium ion concentration at the very end of all that dissociation is 0.1 molar as well. And to calculate the pH, that's equal to the negative log of the hydronium ion concentration, which ends up being 1. The solution, therefore, is acidic. Always ask yourself, what's in my beaker? What's in my beaker is a strong acid, so therefore, yes, we do expect the pH to be less than 1. Therefore, you can check your math. <laughs> All right, so what about weak acids? Well, weak acids we know undergo partial ionization. And so you definitely need a rice table here because they're in equilibria. So let's work an example together. Let's calculate the pH of a formic acid solution that contains 1.35% formic acid by mass, assuming the density of the solution is equal to 1.01 grams per milliliter. So already, based on the name, we're working with an acid. Formic acid is not listed as one of the strong, um, strong acids, so therefore we can assume it's a weak acid. You can look up the Ka value in the literature. In your textbook, it's in the appendix. So the Ka would be 1.8 times 10 to the negative fourth, which also indicates that we're working with a weak acid. On an assessment, I would provide this Ka value for you. All right, so when we're working with rice tables, we're generally working in molarity because the Ka values are basically um, based on concentration, like Kc, right? Um, in an earlier chapter, we had discussed Kp, which was in pressure units, when you're working with gases. But for the context of this particular chapter, we're working with aqueous solutions with these acids and bases. You're going to need to work with your rice table and molarity. Molarity is what over what? Yes, moles of solute over liters of solution. So if we have a 1.35% formic acid by mass, we can assume that we have 100 grams of solution, and therefore in 100 grams of solution, I have 1.35 grams of formic acid. So just converting that percent by mass into a conversion factor that we can use in dimensional analysis. By the way, the structure of formic acid looks like this. And it's whenever you get stung by, a, by an ant, right? You get that, that burning sensation, that's actually the ant delivering that formic acid. And so that's what burns simplest carboxylic acid there. All right, so we need to use the molar mass of formic acid to convert grams into moles. So now we have our moles of solute. And then we need to convert the grams of solution into liters, but first we'll convert to milliliters using the density. and then convert milliliters into liters. So 
So now we're in moles of formic acid per liter of solution, and that's 0.29621 molar. All right, now we're ready to set up our race table. First things first, you must write the reaction down. This is where knowing that general acid ionization equations helpful as well as, like I said, you can always derive it knowing the definitions of acids and bases. So formic acid is the acid, it's a proton donor. So when it loses a proton, you're left with CHO2, but what charge? Negative, good, that's formate, the conjugate base of formic acid. And water acted, acted as a base in this example here. So what is the conjugate acid of water? Hydronium ion, because it's gained a proton. It's a proton acceptor. Excellent. So that's, first and foremost, be able to derive the equation correctly. What's going on in your beaker? We have a weak acid solution. All right. The next part of our rice table is the initial, what we put in. And we already calculated that we put in a 0.29621 molar solution. Remember that solids and liquids are not included in the equilibria expression, so I just mark through that. And then we did not put any products in there initially. Remember that even though water is present, there is a small amount of hydronium ion already initially present in our beaker, but we're going to ignore that. It's not a significant amount there. All right, so then the next part of the rice table is the change. Reactants decrease over time, so minus 1x plus 1x plus 1x. And then what we're most curious about is what's happening in equilibria once everything reaches dynamic. You add the initial plus the change. This is 0.29621. I'm going to say just minus x to simplify it. I include the 1 and the change so that just in case there are still geometric coefficients other than 1, you don't forget that you have to take those into account. And this is 0 plus 1x is x. 0 plus 1x is x. Now, once again, our question's asking us to find the pH, okay? We know the pH is the negative log of the hydronium ion concentration, but we, we know it's the negative log of the hydronium concentration at equilibrium. So this is what we're solving for here, is the concentration of the hydronium ion at equilibrium, which in this case is x. We're gonna use the equilibrium constant expression to help us solve for x. So remember it's products over reactants. So we have the formate conjugate base times the con concentration of hydronium ion over the concentration of formic acid. This is all at equilibria, so we're gonna plug in. So this is gonna be x times x, x squared over 0.29621 minus x is equal to 1.8 times 10 to the negative fourth. In another video, I taught you a trick that sometimes you can ignore x, and I always suggest that you do and then check to see if your assumption is valid. So I'm going to ignore x here so we don't have to do the quadratic. So therefore, I have x squared over 0.29621 is equal to 1.8 times 10 to the negative fourth. You're going to solve for x, and x is equal to 7.302 times 10 to the negative third. And the trick to determining if this is a safe assumption, if x is small enough to ignore, is to divide by the initial concentration times 100%. And that's about 2.5% here. And so yes, X is small enough to ignore as long as it's less than 5% of the initial concentration. All right, so now we have the hydronium ion concentration at equilibrium is equal to X. So that's equal to 7.302 times 10 to the negative third molar 
I want to know what the pH is. It's equal to the negative log of the hydronium ion concentration. And so pH is equal to 2.137. Now in terms of significant figures, um, this concentration was in three sig figs. Um, when you take the negative log, you always add a significant figure in the end, so four sig figs here. Although I've seen a lot that pH is usually reported to three sig figs. Um, so if you're three or four, then you're usually pretty good here. So let's just check to make sure that the answer we calculated makes sense given the context of the problem. What's in your beaker? A weak acid, good. Therefore, would you expect your solution to be acidic or basic? Definitely acidic. And therefore, the pH should be less than seven. Fantastic. So you can check yourself to, to make sure that there's no algebra or calculator error, that your answer makes sense based on your knowledge of what's in your beaker. All right, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.